and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today we're going to be restoring a Hot Wheels Rocket by Baby. This car was produced by Hot Wheels from 1971 to 1972. It is strictly a Hong Kong casting and has a blue windshield which is identifiable as being produced in Hong Kong. Now a lot of times when you find this car the rocket motor in the back will be tarnished but that doesn't detract from the value at all. You pull the exhaust pipes in the back and the two side panels open up which is a pretty cool option. Let's get started on this restoration. I've already drilled out the post so let's go ahead and take the car apart and evaluate what we got. Here's the rocket motor we're going to have to drill out that post because that helps hold the car together. Here we've got the body. We'll have to drill out that post there. Now that's a short post, so you're going to have to be really careful when you drill that out. You'll have to use an eighth inch screw to uh, put that back together. Interior is at least in one piece. Now this interior could have come in several different colors. That's looking pretty good though. Now here's the base now the part that holds the wheels together is all dry rotted and it's incredibly brittle so we're gonna have to fix the wheels in one way or another the base will have to be polished and of course look how bent the axles are and everything but we're gonna try and save those now the body itself like I said we're gonna have to pop out this windshield it may take a little bit more effort to pop it out but we'll uh, get that taken care of here the windshield actually looks like it's in pretty good shape so we can buff that out and make it look really nice. Now one thing I've noticed about these particular castings is that the body on these cars during this time period are incredibly brittle. There we got the windshield out in one piece at least. It's in pretty good shape we'll just have to sand it down and buff it up and then dip it in gauzy and that will look pretty excellent. The body overall is in good shape. It just needs uh, some good old tender love and care. We got all our pieces together here now. Like I was saying before, that post is incredibly short, so you're going to have to be careful drilling that out. Here is a casting that I had before. Now, I was saying that the body is incredibly brittle. All I did was try to use an automatic center punch to pop the uh, area where I could drill the car and drill the post and it completely shattered the front end. Something about this time period they were either experimenting with different types of metal or something and it just wasn't that good. So I had to get another car in order to complete this build. This car that I got actually didn't come with a motor so I'm going to use the motor off this one that I cracked into pieces. Now I could probably epoxy this back together but I really wanted a super nice casting. Alright let's move to the next step. Here we got the body in a nice container and again I'm, I drilled the post out so that's ready to go. Got the screw in there. We're going to use some citrus strip from Walmart to strip the paint off the car. Now as I was saying before there are a lot better products out there like your aircraft stripper and a whole bunch of other ones. I have aircraft stripper but the citrus strip is very reasonably priced. I get it approximately for about eleven dollars a bottle this size at Walmart. Now it takes about half an hour or so for this stuff to work but again it's a lot more uh, user-friendly and it's also uh, very reasonably priced. The aircraft stripper runs anywhere from $25 to $45 for a can. Incredibly expensive, but you know, you get what you pay for. Alright, let's let that sit for a while. Here we've got the base and the rocket motor showing some tarnish. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pour some water in and we're going to make a 50-50 mixture of water and lime away. Now you want just enough in there to cover up your parts. I had to go get a new bottle because I ran out of one of my last videos. Make sure you're wearing your safety gloves and make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. 
incredibly important because I tell you, if you get this lime away in your eyes, it's going to sting and it's going to burn and can possibly hurt you. So you definitely don't want to not use your safety protective gear here. Like I said, approximately a 50-50 mixture. Now you're going to let this sit in the mixture for approximately four to five minutes. You don't want to let it sit too much longer because if you do, it's liable to turn your base black. And once that happens, it's really, really hard to get it out because you've chemically stained the metal and it's really hard to get that out. Let's let this sit now. All right, we've had it sit for about four to five minutes. Now we're gonna take this brass brush. Now in prior videos, I used a steel brush, but it definitely scratches up your base. The brass brush is a lot more forgiving, so I would recommend that you use the brass brush when you're doing this kind of uh, polishing up and cleaning. Use that lime away, scrub it down, and you'll get any of the stubborn, more uh, tarnish away from the metal, and it will help you when it comes time to shine it up or buff it up. But that's looking really, really nice. Once you're done with this, you're going to get it to the sink and rinse it all off with uh, soap and water and get all that lime away residue off there. Now do the engine. Scrub that down. It's got an opening in the front and an opening in the rear. You can get in there with that brush a little tiny bit, but uh, just make it look good. That's looking nice. All right. Let's move on to the next step. We got the body in the citrus strip. We've already cleaned the base. Now check out this new Dremel that I got from Santa Claus. Actually got it from my mother-in-law for Christmas. This thing is absolutely cool. Little battery in the bottom that you can pull out and charge and it's a lot more quieter than the other one. Now let's go ahead and polish up this rocket engine and see what we got. I use the metal polish cream that I got there from Blue Magic. That works really well. I've got flits that I use, and I've got a couple other products here that I'm going to try in some of the future videos, like Autosol and a couple of the other ones. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell so you can be alerted to any new videos that come out in the future. Now, as I was cleaning this rocket motor up, I noticed that there were a lot of small scratches and pits and things in there. It was nice and shiny, but it just didn't look good enough so later on I went ahead and I sanded this down with fine sandpaper I started with 400 went to 600 went to 800 1200 and finally ended up with about 3000 polished it up again and oh my gosh it looked like a mirror so if you do that with your body with your base with your uh, any other parts that you got like that start with a sandpaper that's not going to leave too deep of scratches and then move up through the different sizes as you complete your polishing and your sanding. Now I hate sanding if I don't have to, but sometimes it is necessary. Now here's the windshield. It's got some scratches in it and it definitely needs to be polished. So let's use some super fine. I got some this little 4000 pad here and I'm just gonna try and take off the haze off the top of the windshield here. Now, I probably could have used a little bit more aggressive of a grit on this, but I just wanted to get the, uh, the haze out of there that was, uh, I don't know, just not letting the light through and it kind of looked like it was uh, kind of scratchy. But just the light sanding here took care of everything. Now we're going to use this Meguiar's Plastics Polish. This is some pretty good stuff. I've used it several times and I'm very pleased with how it works. I got this at the local AutoZone and um, it's not that expensive. I think it's like seven or eight dollars for the bottle, but it lasts you a very, very long time. Rubbed it in a little bit here with my finger and uh, once I got to a point where I thought I couldn't do any more damage with my finger, 
then I used a cloth to uh, polish it up even more. And as you're polishing, as it starts to get nice and clean, you're going to notice that the cloth starts making a squeaky sound. That, that lets you know that uh, you're, you've really polished it up well. Now you may have to do this a couple times to get the desired uh, shine that you want on this thing. But I wanted to use this to get some of the major scratches out and try to polish it up a little bit. Because later on, I'm going to dip this in a solution called Gauzy. Now this solution is made specifically for the model car industry and it's used to coat glass to make it look really, really nice. Now there's several brands of plastic polish out there. Whichever one you use, that's cool. As long as you get the results that you need, that's all that matters. Nice. Now we're going to use the gauzy. I got this on Amazon and if you want to get this all you have to do is go on Amazon and type in the word gauzy. Now make sure you get the right stuff here. This is the glass, uh, glass coat. Now notice how I'm rotating the jar like this. You don't want to shake it up because it produces a lot of bubbles. So if you just flip it over like I was showing you there, you're good to go. If you get a lot of bubbles in there and you dip your plastic in there, the bubbles are liable to form on the windshield and when it dries you're going to see the rings from those bubbles. So get yourself a pair of tweezers and then go ahead and dip it in the gauzy. Here we got the windshield and some tweezers. Just dip it in the gauzy, drip it off as much as you can and then you want to use a paper towel and you want to wick off the excess from dipping the windshield in the gauzy. If you have too much of the product on the plastic, it's liable to uh, form a pool at the bottom and it might even stick to the little paper towel that you have there in the bottom. I decided to take these little side flaps and coat those too. And I thought it was a good idea, but after I put it together, it uh, started to show like a little bit of a white film on there. So. What I did later on is after I got it out, I went ahead and stripped it to bring it back to the normal plastic. It was a good idea, but it definitely didn't work. So use the gauzy or your pledge floor finish, whatever you're using to coat your plastic windshields and you're good to go. Um, I wouldn't recommend that you use it to coat these uh, other plastic things like these flaps or the interior in the car or something like that probably not a good idea. It's a good product, just not meant for this. Once you dip your items inside the gauzy and you've wicked off the excess, then go ahead and put it in some type of container and cover it up to keep the boogers off there so it doesn't collect any dust and ruin the really nice shine that you're going to put on there. I've polished the car up. Looks really, really nice. Blown the dust off of it. Now we're going to use Spectre Flame Blue to paint the car back to the original color that it was. Make sure you get the inside, spray some nice light mist coats on the car, and before I painted it I also scrubbed it down with a good degreaser to make sure that you're getting any oils or any other residue off the car so it is ready to accept the paint. Again, the first few coats on the car need to be mist coats build up those layers. Don't try to saturate it immediately because the paint will definitely pool up, run off, and ruin your paint job and you'll have to strip it all down and do it all over again. But it's very important that you use these cleaning steps before you paint because you'll get a really nice paint job. If you don't do it, you're gonna wind up doing it again. After it's sat for a bit, now here we are with a few more mist coats and then we're gonna put some wet coats on there to bring out that real nice high shine. Make sure you constantly rotate the car as you paint. Look how nice that paint is going down. www.redlineshop.com Folks, I can't begin to tell you what a phenomenal product. Now, not only do they have the Spectre Flame, they've also got a real nice line of opaque paints also. Some uh, reds and greens and blues and blacks and whites and just, it's, it's a really, really nice product. I recommend it highly. 
I've used it on several, several customs and paint jobs and group builds. It's just an incredible product. Now they also come up and they have a beautiful clear coat that they sell. Man, I'll tell you, that stuff is fantastic. Look at how that turned out. That's probably one of the best paint jobs I've ever done. And I'm only saying that because it's just so clean. There's no blemishes. There's no dust on it. Now I'm going to put it inside something, some type of container, to keep the dust off of it. Now here's the base. Like I said, the, the area that holds the wheels in the bottom was so brittle, and it just wasn't going to hold the wheels anymore. So I got the base. I got these little tubes from Amazon, and I cut little notches in the tubes. So when I introduce the little pieces of axle in the tubes, I'll be able to glue them in place without worrying about having to glue the wheel also. I'm going to use the original axles, but I'm going to have to bend them to straighten them up. But we're going to cut those axles in half anyways. Now I've got it glued in place. See the little notches there? That's where I'm going to introduce a gel type super glue. You don't want to use the uh, the, the thin stuff because as soon as you put a drip on there it's going to run down the length of the axle and it's going to get into your wheels and it's going to glue them solid so they're not going to roll. So use the gel type not the thin stuff. Okay I've got the car now where I've got half of the car with the wheels on and as soon as they set up I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. I'm really pleased with the way this turned out put some new wheels on those cap style wheels the axles are in place and they look good and it rolls really nice now we've got all of our pieces we got the base with the brand new axles with the new cap tires on there that's looking really really sweet got the rocket engine like I said I went back in I sanded it down and polished it up again and it looks fantastic going to be nice and shiny. That is really cool. I got the internal pieces, the flaps, and again I'm going to have to go in and take the coating of the gauzy off there. The windshield looks absolutely beautiful. Now here's the paint job. Again, the paint job turned out flawless. Man, I'll tell you, I'm gushing about this one because this turned out really, really good. I am super happy. Spectre Flame paints are the bomb, folks. Now, later on, I'm going to be doing some paint jobs with some Createx paints. And they make a great product, too, and I'm looking forward to showing that to you. That's looking fantastic. Let's get the car back together, and we'll do our reveal. And this is what we started with. A Hot Wheels Rocket by Baby in desperate need of a restoration. All the metal on top is tarnished and it definitely needs a good polish. The windshield's all scratched up, we need to fix that. The wheels are there, but they're broken and we definitely need to replace those. This is going to be a lot of fun to restore and it definitely needs it. But this car is pretty cool looking. It's not as popular as some of the other ones, like your Mustangs and your Camaros, but this thing is cool, and it's going to be part of my collection here. And here's what we got now. A beautifully restored Hot Wheels Rocket by Baby. Nice chrome engine sitting out there, all pretty. The, the flaps look good. Now, I did take off the gauzy coating on the flaps, and then I just used some of that Meguiar's plastic polish and cleaned them up and they turned out really nice. The windshield looks fantastic with the gauzy on there. We got brand new wheels, the cap style wheels on the car. The base is nice and polished and the paint job turned out phenomenal. I'm very very happy with the way this car turned out and it's definitely going in my collection that's for sure. Thank you so much for uh, visiting with me today and we got a few more things coming out here in the very near future but I've got a whole list of things to do I've got a subscriber build off coming up which I'm going to announce before the first of January gonna have some great prizes to give away first second and third place finishers 
Happy New Year from Diecast Graveyard, and we'll see you real soon. Thanks for subscribing.